All right. Fire away. Tori. You talked about how Dante needs to earn his rest, earn sure. his spot. And now that you have him back out on the field, what do you need to see from him to, to earn this? Yeah, I mean, it's like with all our guys. Uh, we're not going to make any snap judgments right now. And we're in a position where we can, can try to increase his workload every day. Um, you know, we hadn't been able to practice for multiple reasons, but now he's back and he's fired up, ready to go. And you like guys that want to go, you know, he wants to do more and we got we got to pull him back a little bit, but it'll be a, you know, several week evaluation and all those guys, we got there's a lot of outside linebackers on the roster right now, good opportunities in these preseason games. And then, so hopefully we can make the best objective decision for the team. With Dante and Caleb, is there like an acclimation period that you don't want them to go through maybe a couple of weeks? You know, you take it case by case, but but preferably we're not going to ask a guy to go from zero to 100 right away. It's just not fair to the to the player. It's not fair to the team. Um, obviously, they're at different points in terms of their conditioning. I'm not talking about just cardiovascular. It's just you got to get through these reps. You know, the, the, naturally some of these football movements and uh, happy what we what we saw from both those guys today, and we'll look at the film, but we'll keep pushing them and increasing their workload. Michael, uh, signed Deontay Foreman. What was Reasoning, I guess, behind yeah, a uh, couple of reasons. We just continue to make sure we uh, we're good to go in the preseason, at, at in competition. Obviously, I'd, I'd worked with him last year in Tennessee, saw some things that, that that I liked, and just wanted to see where he was at. He worked out for us, and then uh, the, just the way things happen, guys are a little nicked up, and so he's going to have an opportunity uh, this weekend to at least carry the football. Smith and Sheffield were not a practice today. Either one, of them right? Uh, don't see – no. Um, again, hard to give you a prediction on a timetable. Uh, nothing serious. You know, you may see Smith back sooner than you'll see Sheffield back. It's the best I can give you. And T.J. Green, it seems like he's working over more. That... You pay attention. Huh? <laughs> no, it's just mold, same thing, just different roles. You just want to mix and match. Uh, you know, when, depending on how many DBs you get up, you want to give guys opportunities if they got to go out there and play certain roles to get out of a game. Uh, no different than, you know, you get down DBs, can you finish the game in base, and what calls can you make? I mean, all those things you try to take into account, especially really getting ready for the regular season and in the preseason. Zach, Matt was uh, kind of joking after Saturday scrimmage about him being selfish when it comes to tone and language, you're talking him in his ear. Uh, how's that communication process, and what is, is there any one thing you can point out? He said, hey, coach, I like it like this? Or? No. Um, but there's a certain cadence, and, the, and obviously – I do talk fast at times. I know that, you know, sometimes Ryan would be like, hey, slow down. Matt, Matt's, Matt, I, you know, he likes the calls. And it's just the way we got to work through it. Uh, but I thought it was pretty good for, for Saturday. Uh, you know, I don't really worry about him with that, with that aspect. But it is. It, 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 he is. He's right. There is a new voice in your ear. And every play caller, I'm sure he could tell you better than me that they're all different timing. And then a lot of it is, is a, make sure you enunciate. They're so especially if you're going to have already play calls. Jarvis? Coach, uh, they talked about how difficult it was for him coming in as a rookie to start at right tackle. So, uh, with that being said, what is some of the uh, things, attributes that some of these inexperienced guys need to show in order for you guys to say, hey, we're going to be our guy at the right tackle spot? Yeah, so, you know, that's why these, again, I'll be selfish here as a coach. That's why these preseason games are invaluable in the joint practices because you get to go on, the, the tempo picks up. Uh, it's just one more step to crank up to see if they're, you know, they're ready to go. Uh, you know, we brought those guys in for a reason, but we've got to get a fair evaluation. And, and with the biggest thing, what I've learned, is it just, it's hard. You know, day to day, we're, all, we're constantly, you know, you're looking at the film, you're trying not to make, try to keep perspective. Because I've seen it where guys have struggled in camp, um, and you may not rely on them early in the year, but at some point you need them, and, and you see as they play more, uh, their confidence grows, or maybe it's even year two. And then there's other guys we put out there early as a rookie. They come out fast, and then you just kind of hit a wall midseason. So you just kind of take it case by case. Um, but feel good. I, I'm really excited to see these guys Friday night. And you um, also uh, saw you kind of uh, working with Kyle Pitts, you know, kind of correcting uh, as far as what he sees on down there with the old line. How important is it for you to kind of correct the right then and there versus wait to have the practice to kind of, kind of uh, look, watch film? Well, every player that, that I've worked with has been different, how they learn. And, you know, there's a lot. We're, we're throwing a lot at Kyle. And, and you know, it's, like I told him, it's a long journey. And you, you try to remind these guys, but there's little nuances. And there's things that he's going to have to learn his own 
tell them. Obviously, uh, Justin Peel can tell them pretty, pretty good. And then you got veterans in his room. And there's certain things we'll ask him to do that Lee Smith's never done. So um, you just got to like, – sometimes the act of doing it, it slows down. You know, you, you show them things in the classroom. You may have film of clips of other guys. And here's how they've done it. Some guys need to feel it. But it's – like I said, there's a lot of different ways to teach. Uh, that was just an example right there. We were working it, just kind of going through the nuances there. Charles? Following up on you saying you don't want to take guys zero to 100, uh, would, would you expect Caleb to be ready to play in this first preseason? Probably not. Probably not. We'll, we'll make that determination Thursday, but I, I don't. But what our plan is right now with him, it's no strategic advantage. I don't think I don't think Braves is going to be listening to this right now, trying to get a strategic advantage for Friday night if he is. Uh, sorry to waste your time, Braves, but uh, <laughs> but no, I, I don't. That's not the plan right now. And what have you learned about your, your depth at that position? Pretty good. Like I said the other night, uh, it's good to see Willie Beavers go out there. Thought, thought he did a nice job the other night. Still happy with Jalen. Um, you know, Spriggs is another guy. We he'll continue to uh, we'll continue to have competition out there. And we got to find. I mean, it's ultimately you got to find the guys under 53. But it's really the eight that you got to put up on game day right now. Miles, coach, you touched on it before, but where do you, where do you, or what are you liking rather from uh, Richie Grant's progression right now, and uh, what do you think he's to improve on? Anyway? Well, like all these guys, I mean, there's there's tons of stuff I need to improve on every day. I mean, you you hope you never stop growing, try to improve. Obviously, you know he's a rookie. There's things he's going to feel the first time. Uh, we we got to see where that point is. Where you know. Diminishing returns, I, I, I haven't seen that yet um, with Richie. But another guy, you know, he's going to get the entire preseason. It'll be good work for him going against Tennessee. It'll be good work for him down in Miami. Those practices and, and throughout the preseason. Yeah, has, has AJ been like, kind of guiding him a little bit, you know, opposite, opposite side of the field type thing, where he's like, this is where he should be, even though he's only been here for one season type thing? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that we ask him to do that's very different. Um, so, Again, I, and I think having guys like Eric Harris and Duran have been really valuable to Richie because they've been through a lot and they play, you know, pretty similar roles. Fine. The you know, DBs had a good day. A couple of interceptions, couple uh, you know, flying around like they have been. You know, is that just them getting more comfortable to working together? Or is that them getting more familiar with what they're expecting from the uh, offense scene every day? Well, it's both. I mean, the thing we want in practice. That's why you got to take things into context. Uh, there's things we're asking the quarterbacks to do, push like certain drills and parameters. There's things we're working on. Again, we got to push the limits to see what we can do. So you got to evaluate every time, every one of them different. Like, right, there's a protection, ball gets batted line, ball gets batted, uh, pops up. You know, it's, you know, at the quarterback position, you know what you signed up for, but they're not all the same, right? And then you got the ones you, you concern yourself with are the ones that are just poor decision making. And you gotta, but you don't want the, the guys to become hesitant. And I say that because. I did think the defense today, they did a nice job. They're breaking it. They're getting more confidence. Um, and that's what you want to see. You just want to see that growth, but you want to see that back and forth. I, I don't want to see just a bunch of easy check downs, especially when you get into 7-on-7. I mean, they, they know they're not getting hit out here in practice anyways. But certainly in 7-on-7, you don't feel anybody at your feet. So, uh, But very pleased, very pleased with the back and forth. You know, you always worry with, after a day off, stay in scrimmage. You know, these are the lulls in camp. we gotta, we got to keep pushing. Part of maybe cross training TJ Green, also getting Richie, maybe work with more Jalen. Or, or no, I mean, I mean you're right. I mean those those are the you know whether intended or unintended consequences. You know, yeah, somebody else has got to play more in a different role, and it's just that's a reality in the NFL. You know, you, you you go through a game plan, and you know you don't you can't you don't have as many guys up as you do in the preseason. It's not like college football when you got depth everywhere. Especially if you've recruited, you know, a place like Alabama or Georgia, so you do have to get creative, and, and it'll be the same thing for for Avery, you know, or whoever uh, wins the punt return job to, to get up on game day. Got to be able to help us out somewhere else. I mean, and, and, and we joked about earlier post draft versatility, but it does it does matter. How much does that the fifty three man construction maybe matter to who's going to win that job versus? The guy actually winning that job outright. Right. I mean, you, you want somebody to win it outright. And then you've got to say, oh, okay, what else can he do? So, like I said, I, I, I feel good. You know, you hope to get enough reps and you can get real evaluation in the games when they are tackling live to see. Because even in practice, 
we got to feel it. Obviously, minimum job description, catch the, catch the punt. But to be able to feel those lanes, see who can put their foot in the ground, who's got the vision, um, and you hope you have enough punt returns to, to evaluate fairly. What's that? It says punt return is one of those where like, you need the game to practice to get a sense you can win that job. I just think it helps. It's the same thing with the quarterback play uh, because it's just different right there. Now, I, I can't say I can do it from experience. I, they never asked me to, to go back and play quarterback or return. I wish I, you know, wish I could have been a skill position, but I wasn't uh, gifted enough genetically, I guess, or what, whatever. But in all, in all seriousness, you've got to feel that stuff because there's got to be a consequence, right? I mean, you can be aggressive and practice you know nobody's going to light you up and ball comes at you you may put your foot in the ground you do that in the game I mean you may get there's consequences same with the quarterback you hold the ball forever you may launch it and you know people are like, oh that's a great throw it's like yeah we would have been hit two seconds ago so uh that's again that, there's nothing that can replace that Well, you know, you should have a lot of confidence coming in from last season. Uh, going out, you know, that's, that's an interesting position because a lot of those guys usually don't stick on the first team. There's like a pot of guys in there. It's, it's an interesting I – mean, even like a guy like Brett Kerner we had in Tennessee, you know, he had been cut or waived. And I can think of guys over the years, I mean, that I have it. So I think confidence does help. Obviously, from year to year, no year is the same. But I do feel good about where he's at confidence-wise. Um, just keep hammering him make sure he keeps lifting his arms because I, I, right now I don't think he's got the biggest arms of any kicker in the NFC South. I think a guy from Carolina does. So that's a challenge I've got for Young Way. We'll see if he can get there. Anything else? Anything else? Thank you. Yeah, you guys see him? Joe, look up Joey Sly. <laughs>